well, well told. We're back. Uh, hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and this is Oracle Open World. This is theCUBE. Narayan Venkat is here. We're going to stay on this theme of Flash. He's with Violin. I'm also joined by David Floyer. David Floyer has done a lot of work in the Flash area. Actually, David, I want to start with you. Uh, we're at Oracle Open World. You did a piece of research uh, last year talking about if you optimize your infrastructure stack, in particular, if you spend a little bit more money on, on, on storage, generally, but specifically flash storage, you're going to dramatically reduce the number of cores that you have to deploy to support applications. Why is that important for Oracle customers? Well, why that's important for Oracle customers is that the, the largest single component of any system running Oracle is the Oracle license itself. It's, it's in the order of 80% of the cost. So if you can optimize on um, the number of cores that you need, if you can put in a, a, a flash uh, as, a, as a tier or all flash type array to do the IOs much quicker, then the net effect of that is that a whole lot of processing that you would uh, do waiting for IO uh, goes away and you require far fewer cycles uh, in the order of uh, uh, 40 to 50% less and that means that you can need less Oracle licenses to do a particular piece of work. Now, that's not saying you're going to get rid of those licensing, but what it does, it reduces the cost of the whole of that to Oracle processing. And that, that enables that same spend to go much, much further and tackle new problems in new areas. Like anything else, when you reduce the cost, then you are significantly uh, improving the, it, it's elastic. You can significantly improving the capability of those environments. So, so the whole notion of you know, semiconductor to base, the base storage, persistent flash based storage is really changing the way in which people are thinking about uh, deploying applications, Narian, um, Violin, hot company, obviously you guys are doing an IPO. I know we can't say much more than that, but the information's now out there, so that's, that's good. People are you know, parsing it and and I know your CEO's out doing a road show, so that's cool, we'll let, we'll let Don Basile talk about all that stuff, but you're, you're the product guy, you know, you, you're in the, in the trenches with customers. Um, tell us what's going on at Oracle Open World with Violin. Great, so it clearly Larry has spoken about, you know, moving Oracle data sets and applications in memory, right? So we've been preaching that for quite some time with the, with the message that if you move the bulk of your business critical applications in a persistent memory form factor, uh, you can achieve tremendous amount of application acceleration, and as a result, business acceleration. To David's point earlier, if you look at it in totality, in terms of what is the most cost-effective infrastructure to really accelerate your applications and run your databases, and as we call it, databases at the speed of memory, what impact does it have on your business? And that is exactly what Violin has been doing for the last you know, five years, which is what can we as Violin offer solution sets to the customers that can help accelerate their application and help accelerate the business at economics that is far better than legacy storage, particularly at scale. Right? So that's exactly what we're doing. And so what we're demonstrating today at um, uh, Oracle Open World is a plethora of our solutions, which are primarily persistent memory focus. You know, we've got solutions in the what we call memory array, which is uh, flash memory persistent storage running on the network. We've also demonstrating uh, flash or persistent memory acceleration on the server side with the PCIe cards, and then uh, we're also demonstrating uh, a solution what we call a Maestro Services Software Suite that enables you to actually pull data from uh, applications that are running on legacy storage and help move them over to a persistent memory based here. So I'd encourage all of you, uh, those who are attending Oracle Open World to come by, stop by our booth and you know, understand the various different solutions we're offering in the market space. Yeah, so you mentioned uh, 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 Oracle and 12C and in-memory databases and we heard you know, Ellison last night talking about in-memory. We've heard previously guys like SAP, Bill mm -hmm. McDermott has said, Things like imagine the world without without disk, and we were joking off camera. I said, "Oh, you don't have to persist persist data anymore." But of course, um, you I'm sure imagine a world without disk, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least in part. Uh, so, but talk about in memory and in that trend. Um, like I say, all these CEOs talking about it, that's mm -hmm. a that's actually a good thing for you guys. Why is that? Absolutely. So it is it is clear. It's well understood amongst you know end users and practitioners that. 
if you can actually move your application sets or, or the hot data, if I were to call it, in memory, and I say in memory in a very broad sense, you can certainly accelerate your applications. Now we all know that the amount of data set that you typically process is much larger than your active data sets. So the, you know, so the definition of in memory will vary a little bit, which is uh, at the end of the day you have to persist data. If you can actually move your persistent data into a memory tier as well, i.e. I talk about a persistent memory tier, in this case it could be flash, along with DRAM as, as a memory tier, then between the two, which is DRAM as a non-persistent tier and flash or you know, persistent memory tier, you can actually accelerate in, in significantly databases and applications, layered applications. So the meta level question is, if you have a broader tier of memory, some of it is non-persistent and, you know, and the majority of that is persistent and you stay away from using disks or spinning disks as a, as a means for persisting data, then uh, at scale, you can achieve tremendous economics and business acceleration. And okay. that's what we're focused on. Okay, now you guys made the Gridiron acquisition. Um, you basically made an announcement last week, mm -hmm. sort of not only reintroducing that, but, but reintroducing that with some enhanced capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and it, one of those was tiering, right. uh, additional tiering. So I wonder if you could just Take us through and unpack that announcement from last week. Absolutely, we're happy to do that. So we, last week we announced a whole new sort of complement of um, solutions called the Maestro, Violin Maestro Memory Services Software Suite. Um, we've taken, we've borrowed some technology from our acquisition uh, of Gridiron. We've incorporated some of the technologies that we've been uh, you know, developing over the last several years. We brought them together, amalgamated them, and essentially set up uh, an infrastructure where you can actually tier application data between disk storage systems that are resident on the network, i.e. over a fiber channel infrastructure or an iSCSI infrastructure, and then uh, incorporate a persistent memory tier wherein you can actually truly tier the data. Uh, and you can use it in multiple different ways. You can use it in the form of uh, a platform for uh, accelerating read-only data, so think about cache. Uh, you can think about um, a broader uh, scheme in terms of tiering, wherein the majority of your active data sets that are both read and written are actually written into persistent memory. And if you really step back and think about why are we doing what we're doing, uh, given we're primarily focused on the persistent memory tier, we believe this solution is an on-ramp to help you move your data sets from legacy spinning disk storage architectures to a persistent memory architecture, right? And so I think that's where the biggest value that we see, which is customers want to be able to get some benefit of acceleration, be able to tier this non-disruptively, and then non-disruptively move the data from a legacy storage tier into a persistent memory tier. So, so, if, we, I, so yeah. if I understand that, then you're looking at uh, uh, products uh, such as the caching from NetApp or, or the uh, IBM or EMC uh, Fast, uh, fast uh, mm -hmm. products and saying uh, you can put your solution in mm -hmm. uh, as an alternative to upgrading the systems with Flash and with their software. Is, that, is that is it? Absolutely, right. and, and one of the big value propositions of the Maestro software suite is that it plugs in non-disruptively to your environment, into your environment, right? We also support a plethora of heterogeneous storage systems in the back and it sets the stage for a non-disruptive migration off of legacy storage to a persistent memory tier, right? Now, you know, we all recognize that customers have got petabytes of legacy storage, and they're running their business critical applications on it, and, and one of the questions that often comes up is, how do I migrate my data? How do I use my active data sets that are running business critical applications to think databases, et cetera, and how do I move that into a persistent memory tier with as little disruption to my applications as possible. Mm -hmm. And what Maestro's services software suite allows you to do is to do exactly that, which is get them on a path that you can tier, i.e. bring in a persistent memory tier to your, to your legacy environment, uh, free from any vendor lock-in, and then facilitate the move of the specific sets of data that are important to you into a persistent memory tier. Well, you always have some lock-in, don't you? Such as your Maestro suite, for example, but... Uh... Leaving that aside. I will clarify this though. I will absolutely <laughs> clarify this, which is uh, while the, if you, if you think about what Maestro offers itself, it plugs itself in transparently. 
right? Once you've migrated data off, off a legacy storage to a persistent memory tier, you can actually take away the uh, Maestro appliance if need be. So it isn't a lock-in per se at all, right? I mean, clearly you've moved your data sets from spinning disk to a violent memory tier, right? So absolutely, so from that perspective, you're saying that I've managed to move my data sets. Excellent, uh, okay. And so there is no yeah. vendor lock-in. Right? <laughs> clearly, we deliver value and, right. and customers will, will um, you know, use us where we th they think that we're delivering value. In this case, it's purely about how do I accelerate my, uh, our customers' business applications and can I do it at cost points that are far more appealing uh, with our solution than it is with legacy storage, particularly when you get to large scale. So um, let's talk about Oracle for a little bit because mm -hmm. uh, Oracle databases tend to be the mission critical applications mm -hmm. in organizations and people are very reluctant to take any sort of risk with that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they've got their systems in place, the DBAs are very, very protective of their territory. Right. Um, can you talk about what, how you would practically do that? How would you convince the CIO, for example, that you could help them take it step by step and, and preserve mm -hmm. that environment? Because right. they're very reluctant uh, it, to take risks. It's a, it's and, a, and DBAs get fired for very little mistakes. Absolutely. So, let me start with by giving you a perspective of what Violent's been doing over the last you know, several years, right? Which is, we've been going into primary database workloads. So think mission critical, think business critical environments. Wherein uh, we've gone in, customers have used our memory array appliance, memory arrays uh, as a back-end repository for their database workloads. And these are, highly transactional in nature, or perhaps even you know, focused on data warehousing, but it is it, it is a set of applications where the, the criticality, criticality of the business data is very high. So we've been very successful in the market already for the last several years, wherein we're running those business critical database on our memory arrays, right? So our memory arrays are highly available. Uh, they are designed for tier one workloads, which means that they cannot go down there, you know, they've got a tremendous amount of redundancy built in. So there are, we've got a large number of customers who are deploying those today in production for many years. So, so that is a proof point of what we have, we meaning Violin has brought forth into this market space. Now, uh, we're, we're started, starting to expand our reach, uh, which uh, wherein we are essentially facilitating that move of those application sets from a legacy storage environment to this, right? So in the context of this discussion when we're talking about Maestro services, et cetera, we've built a system where it plugs in into a fiber channel infrastructure, right? Uh, with no change to your applications or your storage system, with some minor changes to your zone in the fiber channel fabric, the Maestro appliance gets plugged in. And you know, with just a few rescan of the paths, we're able to now be presenting a highly available system along with the flash memory array to facilitate that transition, right? So we've actually proven already in the market space for the last several years of running business critical databases and pick your favor, flavor of uh, Oracle. You know, we've got Oracle uh, 10, we've got Oracle 11, Rack, all those kinds of applications being deployed already on violent memory. So customers are already comfortable with the idea of deploying flash while well, you would argue that perhaps Flash was a novelty three, four years ago, it's become a very, very crucial component of a CIO strategy going forward. And then they're all asking the question, what is my Flash strategy? You know, how do I get my business critical applications to the fastest tier such that at scale, I'm a lot more economical in terms of an infrastructure. And so that's what Violin is out to achieve. So that leads me to a discussion about, you mentioned legacy storage before, mm -hmm. right? And legacy storage is, you know, put in quotes, it's a pejorative basically says, okay, uh, legacy storage means, it means old, it means maybe I, I think about bolting on flash into a you know, spinning disk-based controller, all the things that you guys like mop the floor with. Right. Okay. Now, obviously the legacy storage vendors have seen the trends, mm -hmm. they see all the, the money you know, going into flash, they see the hot IPOs, they see the acquisitions, and they've been investing themselves, mm -hmm. they've been buying companies. So they're transforming their legacy infrastructures into hybrids, mm -hmm. so many, many are doing all flash arrays, mm -hmm. many are acquiring companies that are all flash arrays. So even, even Oracle itself now right. has a you know, big, big push with the, uh, the uh, NFS storage, the ZFS storage appliance right. toward a hybrid. So when they go to talk to executives, they're going to say, hey, we have everything that Violin has. Mm -hmm. We have 
all the flash, we have the hybrids, we see the economics, we're investing R&D, trust us. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? So, at the end of the day, the way, you know, if you go there, you're selling the solution, any solution doesn't matter, right? You're essentially talking to the line of business person. And the meta level question to ask is, and I often ask the question, if your infrastructure ran at the speed of memory and I make it economical for you to do so, uh, what impact does it have on your business? If, you're, if your application is able to run 10x faster today, today, right? What impact does it have on your business? And so the big question to ask is, do you as a customer, if I'm a CIO, I'm asking the question, do I have a competitive advantage by moving to a persistent memory infrastructure today as opposed to waiting for the next three to four years? Right? That's the operative question. And, and we have a number of customers who are already doing so, which is, can they take advantage of a persistent memory storage system today that can help them accelerate the business rather than wait for another three years? And so there is, there is a opportunity at cost for waiting for technology to evolve. And, in, and, and of course, various different customers are in various stages of uh, uh, risk tolerance. And we believe, believe some of the more aggressive, some of the more, I would say, forward-thinking customers have already started to adopt memory storage, right? And, and I, think, I think the meta level question is, do you want to wait several years, or do you want to take advantage so you, of it today? So you said three years. You feel like you have a three-year advantage on the legacy storage uh, absolutely. guns? Absolutely, we've been, we've been doing this. Our belief is that the, the active data sets will transform or will change and the infrastructure will transform to a memory data, totally. memory person, I completely right? agree. So we're not saying that, well, you're going to go put your tier three or your inactive data sets in memory because it's not economical, right? So what we're out to do is to actually bring the acceleration or help customers move their active data sets today. And, and there's clearly, you know, there's an opportunity cost of waiting, right? Why take that, you know, why take the risk of waiting, right? Excellent, Narian, well thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and uh, good luck with all the action in the marketplace, good luck with the IPO, and I uh, really appreciate your time. Great, thanks David, thank you, thanks David. Dave for having us. All right, keep it right there everybody, we'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from Oracle Open World.